This is the Ryder and Lisa podcast. Brought to you by Yegg Property Pros. Powered by Real Broker. Get a realtor who knows. Call the pros. Talking about if you've screwed up already in 2024, Lisa left work after not doing everything she's supposed to do around here. Yeah, even got emails like, hey, did you submit these? I'm like, yeah, of course I did. But didn't. I, but I didn't. Didn't. What is wrong with me? I work in a restaurant. Is this text? And I dropped sushi on a baby, but it's okay. He seemed to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing you don't work at like uh, <laughs> Montana's with the fajitas, for True. example, because the baby wouldn't enjoy that. No. Let's hope it was like a cold dish, like California rolls or something. I heard once that uh, it was a tweet, I think, that just said anybody who orders fajitas from a place that brings them out sizzling just wants some attention. No, they're the main <laughs> character. They think they're the most important person in the restaurant. And then there's other people that just want a freaking fajita and they're mortified when they come out because everybody stops what they're doing and they stare. Yeah, the food getting yeah, yeah. delivered to. It's <laughs> awful. Uh, we got two Mikes texting in. Yeah, I see that. Both Mike, with different stories. Yeah, they're, we're asking you if you've already screwed up in 2024, whether at work or maybe even in your personal life. That's fine, too. This one says, I, I parked in the complete wrong spot. I was so tired earlier this week. Uh, it turns out it was the new boss's spot. No. Yeah, turned into a whole thing, he said. Whoops. And then the other Mike says, hey, guys, so yesterday sucked. I smashed my scanner, flew out of my hand off the truck and hit the cement floor. The boss was not happy, but he got a new scanner out of it. Uh, What's this one here? Karen says, I dated all client files on January 2nd as January 3rd, 2023. Didn't even realize it till the end of my workday. So I had to revise, resave and resend everything. That is a common mistake. I'm finding it very awkward when I'm typing 2024 on my keyboard. I yeah. always I want to hit the three. What do you got for us? I have a story for your company screw up. Yeah. Uh, my dad is a snowbird, so he lives in Arizona half the year. And one of the grocery stores was having a sale for, like, bottles of whiskey for $20. So he grabbed a case off the shelf, and it was still sealed. And the cashier rang in one bottle and charged him $20 for six in the case. And he was like, start the car! And ran out the door. <laughs> that is the best. It happened twice. Twice? He did that the next day, too. He was like, let's see if I could do it again. And I would have went did. back every Your day. Your dad is my hero. Let's try this again. <laughs> yeah, but the worst that's going to happen is going to charge you for all six that time. And then you still got five free. <laughs> There are 10 to 12 year old girls that are so obsessed with Sephora that now Sephora employees Mm. are opening up online about how we need to get these kids out of the stores. Are a lot of 10 to 12 year olds roll into the mall by themselves? I think so. Where are the parental supervision? They're not with them. Like 13, 14, sure. But like a lot of people letting their 10 year olds go to the mall solo. What? It's probably more. So 12 year olds because grade seven, right? Yeah. If you're unaware of what Sephora is, it's a beauty store Mm -hmm. that carries a lot of high end makeup and skincare products. And like when you were that age, were you rolling into what Claire's and getting like that's what I mean, two dollar stuff? Where are the stores for 10 to 12 year olds? Because Sephora shouldn't be it. Why are 12 year olds going up to an employee and asking them about retinol? Retinol is for wrinkles. Right. I just think it's interesting hearing from employees because they're saying that these groups of 12 year olds are coming into the stores and making a mess. Yeah. Leaving makeup from all of the test tubes. I mean, don't get me wrong. I remember going and using the testers for sure. But you weren't at a high end makeup store. I was at uh, just a local drugstore. So older customers who like normally shopping at Sephora aren't going. No, they're not. They're like, we need a 21 plus. Like, you have to get ID'd if you walk in. (laughs) Companies are a little bit greasy in early 2024. They know people are uh, doing their best to try to live maybe a healthier lifestyle. And save money. And save money. So the push notifications are coming in strong right now. (laughs) You were saying the ads, too. Oh, yeah. Like, just, you were at the gym and the TV ads that were running were just like nothing but fried chicken <laughs> it was all fried chicken <laughs> yeah. and it was the most unbelievable deals because right. they know that people are trying to not 
spend money. Go to their drive through But they have but that But I was like, itch. I'm like on the rowing machine. And I'm like, oh, I might stop there on the way home. That's protein. No, Lisa, no. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> it's Ryder and Lisa's top seven at seven. All right, this will be posted at play107.com in, uh, I don't know, a couple of hours when I no. get time. Well, I want to focus on the show after this. Calm down. Send it to me. I'll get it up in five yeah, minutes. you do it too fast. What is the difference? You won't put pictures yes, in. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I will put the work in. It'll be up soon. So if you want the list, after we uh, count down the top seven shows that are going to be streaming in January of 2024. That I think are worth watching. Text in and I will get back to you with said list. Okay. Like when the link is up? Exactly. Okay. All right. At number seven, Masters of the Air is coming to Apple TV on January 26th. What's that about? It's uh, These are all TV shows. No movies. All series okay. this month. Uh, it's a group of pilots in the Air Force surviving World War II. It's based on a book of the same name that was super popular. It stars Austin Butler, who is Elvis. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Can he stop doing the Elvis voice for it, though? Because It could work, though. Maybe. Imagine Elvis' voice in, in a plane. Uh, at number six, Bluey Season 3 is dropping on Disney Plus on All January right. 12th. Now you're speaking my language here. I uh, love Bluey. Yeah, my daughter was like a little bit older than the hype. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she was right in the middle of the Frozen hype, which was too much, far too much money spent on Elsa. But it seems like parents and kids really agree that Bluey is a great, great show. No, like my brother-in-law will be so excited to hear that there's a new season coming out. Yeah, yeah. He he looks up to the father in Bluey so much. I'm not even joking. He inspires him to be a better dad. Perfect. That's how good Bluey is. All right, there you go. All I needed to say. Uh, Ad number five, Echo is coming to Disney and Hulu. This is a new series. January 9th is when it drops. Um, It's getting a lot of hype. It's expected to be Disney Plus's most action-packed Marvel series to date. And it has a lot of indigenous undertones that people are really giving it credit for. for What's it called again, sorry? It's called Echo. All right. It's about a city woman who goes back to her hometown, if I'm not mistaken. And gets really into the culture and just becomes a real badass. So that's January 9th, Disney and Hulu. It's called Echo. Uh, At number four, for the top seven series that are dropping this month on streaming services, season one of Ted coming to Peacock on January 11th. So it's a spinoff of the movie. The movies, yeah. The movies, Ted. Seth MacFarlane is obviously a genius. He's putting it together. Uh, I think the hardest I've ever laughed in a movie theater was when... Ted 2 was in theaters. Like, okay. it might have been the gummy kicked in pretty hard, but I was having the best time. So I'm really excited. <laughs> and of course, Seth MacFarlane, for those who aren't familiar with like celebrity names and stuff, he's the creator of Family Guy. That's right. At number three, True Detective Night Country, season four of that series is coming to Crave. I, it's an HBO show, so I'm assuming it'll be on Crave. People love True Detective. Yeah. Like, the first season was one of the best series I've ever watched. And that had Matthew McConaughey, right? That's right. Okay. And Woody Harrelson. Uh, this one has Jodie Foster playing the police chief in I a remote it. Alaska town. The original creator and director is not involved in this season. Okay. But people are saying who they brought in. Isa Lopez, the new writer, director, executive producer, is like top notch. So could be very good. Uh, the Brother's Son is at number two. Season one of it drops on Netflix today. And I watched the trailer of it, and it looks badass. And that's in Netflix Canada? I hope so. It better be. That makes me so mad when I get excited about a show, and then it's only in the States. I feel like it is. Okay. We might have to dig into that. But Michelle Yeoh is in it, and uh, she's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's got, like, Kill uh, Kill Bill vibes. The music and like the fight scenes and stuff kind of gave me a similar feel to that. I feel like we're getting back to good soundtracks with shows and movies. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah, that's actually a very good point. Like even Saltburn, as weird as it was, Murder on the Dance Floor is like back in the chart, back on the charts again. It's a song from the 80s. I wonder if we're at an age that we (laughs) recognize the throwback songs that they're putting on these movies now. So they've just always been good? We're just old. Yeah, Yeah. Okay. 
And at number one, the one I'm most excited for, season one of this, if there is even any more seasons, it might just be a limited series. Uh, January 25th, it's called Griselda. It's coming to Netflix. Sofia Vergara stars as Griselda Blanco, who is the godmother of a drug cartel that uh, reigned Miami in the 70s and 80s. So this is going to be a very serious role for yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Which like that. I'm excited for. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, definitely got vibes of Narcos, like okay. just similar style. And uh, she's also producing it, if I'm not mistaken. So Griselda drops at the end of the month. And a fantastic honorable mention that keeps rolling in on the text line to everyone else that loves Bravo. Vanderpump, Vanderpump Rules is returning January 30th. And this is post scandal. Okay. You probably don't know what I'm talking I about. I don't know what any of that meant, but <laughs> sure, I'm excited about that honorable mention too. If you want this full list of all of the shows that are going to be available to stream as of this month, the first month of 2024, text in right now, we will send you that list. Is there something that is popular that when you see people going crazy for it, you just don't understand the hype? I kind of felt that way about pickleball until I tried it. <laughs> oh, now you get it. I love it now, yeah. For me, it's the thousands of people that gather in Times Square mm-hmm. for the ball drop on New Year's Eve. Yeah, it looks like uh, pretty crowded. I don't know where you'd go to, like, get a beer. You can't. What? I don't think you're allowed to drink. I don't think that there are washrooms available. And everybody is squished together. And they watch the ball drop. Can you imagine how annoying it would be to be a business owner close by with a bathroom? Exactly. If there's tens of thousands of people there, like, jammed in there. I went to Times Square in, what, August? Mm -hmm. We were there. And, like, uh, I found it too busy, and it was just a quiet August night. (laughs) Like, it's it would be insane there on New Year's Eve. Now, this is just hearsay. I don't know if it's a fact. But apparently, to get a front row standing spot you wait up to like 18 hours before the ball drops to get a good spot and because there's no washrooms full grown adults wear diapers to the event like that don't have to that normally wouldn't need diapers you're talking that's what i mean yeah um so everyone standing in that crowded space are all pooping and peeing in their pants Mm mm-hmm like little babies. Yeah. Thousands. <laughs> wow. Thousands of adults. I've heard people doing that at Taylor Swift concerts. Yeah, they too. don't want to miss their favorite song. So they'll wear a diaper to the event so they don't have to get up from their seat. Wow, they're probably standing. Oh, yeah, true. In both situations. They're dancing. But, like what? I, I, for a Taylor Swift concert, it still doesn't make sense to me that you would do that, but oh, especially if it makes we'll... more sense than <laughs> going to what? Watch Ryan Seacrest back as he does a countdown on TV. The ratings for it on TV are pretty big, but I don't know how many people are like actually consuming the content or if it's just background because people want that countdown clock. Nikki just wrote in, it's true. I have I know people who went to the ball drop and they did in fact wear diapers. Can you imagine bringing in the new year? You're looking you're making eye contact with a stranger you're both peeing at the same time? Like I don't know what to think about this. Your eyebrow is twitching. Are you okay? I'm peeing. <laughs> She just wanted you to catch the vibe. (laughs) 1K Wordplay. Brought to you by Out of Bounds Restaurant. We are joined by caller seven. Tracy, are you ready to win $1,000 like Spencer did yesterday? Yes. Okay. Okay. We've gotten close. We've never gone back to back days. Never. I feel like we uh, did a thousand and then a hundred the next day a couple times, but let's let's go for it. Yeah. All right. Here's how the game works, Tracy. You're gonna pick a teammate, either Lisa or myself, who will leave the room. We're then gonna give you five words. You tell us the first word that comes to mind for each before inviting your teammate back in. They'll play the same game as you did, and for every one of your answers that matches with theirs, it's a uh, twenty-five dollars that you get. If you match all five, it's a thousand. Who's your teammate this morning, Tracy? A rider. Okay. Bye. Get in the zone in the hallway. Maybe do some squats or something. No problem. Some jumping jacks. All right, Tracy, I'm starting your 25-second timer right after I say the first word, good luck. Okay. What comes to your mind when I say dream? Sleep. Studio. 
Oh. Office? Scratch. Itchy. Hydration. Water. Thread. Sewing. Good answers. And you still had nine seconds left on your clock. Let's get your teammate back in. All right, Ryder. Let's give away some money on a Thursday morning. What comes to your mind when I say dream? Sleep. 25 bucks, Tracy. Hey. Hydration. Water. 50 bucks. Yeah. Scratch. Itch. Itchy. Yeah, we'll count that. All right, 75 bucks, Tracy. Hey. What comes to your mind when I say thread? Needle. Sewing. So close. You were on the same same wavelength there. We were just a little off. That's okay. We can still send Tracy home with 100 bucks with this last word. What comes to your mind when I say studio? Studio. I didn't realize this one would be so tricky because... I'm going to say movie. She said office. Oh, okay. Both pretty good answers, but that was a tough word, I will admit. You picked up, what, 75 bucks, Tracy? That's right. Thanks for playing. Thank you. Awesome. Next chance to play tomorrow morning at 7.50. It's Linky. It's Linky. And what you gonna do when the holster and his Hulkamaniacs run wild on you? Ah, uh, yeah, I killed me. Ryder and Lisa's Nostalgia. Brought to you by Sweet Convenience. Only on Play 107. We make this quite easy for you. All you have to do is vote at 780-784-7107. We both compile a list of things that bring us back to earlier days. Mm -hmm. And you just tell us which list was more relatable to you. Yeah, which one resonates more. You ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. Do you want to go first? Having an inability to save progress on early video games, so leaving the console on for days to wrap a game. I watched someone unplug the PS, the original PlayStation, yeah. when her older sister was so far into Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Yeah. It was awful. Oh, it started some, like, wars, wars. in the house. Yeah, it was bad. Getting the new black and white Adidas flip-flops that had those hard balls underneath them so they really hurt your feet anytime you walked in them. What oh, like was the, the point? Po- the pokey things? Yeah, what? Once you broke them in, they were good. Yeah. Danny Tanner dishing out some of the best advice you'd ever heard. It's funny you say that because mine is also about dads. When your dad would pull out a handkerchief from his back pocket to blow his nose and then put it back in said pocket. My dad asked for new handkerchiefs for Christmas this year, so... So there's still a thing, hey? Still a thing. Just a pocket full of boogers, all right. When you had something important taped on VHS and your stupid mom would tape Donahue over it. Oh my gosh, one of my favorite workouts was taped over by my sister. There was some show she wanted to watch. It was like Homeward Bound or something was on TV and she taped over it. Good show. Not being able to get the sand out of your shoe after going crazy at the park. (laughs) <laughs> uh, my last one is burning your mouth on hot. Uh, sorry, burning your mouth on hockey rink hot chocolate. That one is so good. Eating a snack pack at school, but you forgot a spoon again, so you're scooping it out with your finger. Nasty. Hey, but everyone did it. Why were we always sick? <laughs> All right, let's quickly blast through our list one more time so people know what's what, and then you vote mm-hmm. whose list hits you in the feels harder. Leaving a console on for days because you couldn't save it. Danny Tanner dishing out great advice. Your mom taping over something important on your VHS and burning your mouth on hockey rink hot chocolate. Black and white Adidas flip-flops that hurt your feet. Your dad's handkerchief that he would blow his boogers into. Get Trying to get the sand out of your shoe after the park and eating a snack pack with your fingers. Let us know somebody's winning a gift cert to sweet convenience. I got last place in my fantasy football league this year. I won this league last year. I went from first to last. Whoa. Embarrassing, right? That sucks. So what? It, well, now what? Well, we have punishments. What? So I have a punishment. What is it? Oh, my gosh. This is so exciting. I have to take a blow-up doll out on a fancy date. Like a, a nasty blow-up doll. 
if that makes sense. You have to go for dinner mm -hmm. with a blow up doll. <laughs> No, actually, but that was Thankfully, on. Thankfully, <laughs> I was going to say, this is going to ruin everything. <laughs> that was uh, <laughs> one of the options that was tabled. Okay, so what do you actually have to do? For an entire year, I have to uh, drive around with a big bumper sticker that just says last place in fantasy. Oh, that's so boring. What? Yeah. That is so lame. I'm glad they didn't let me come up with it. Yeah, seriously, who came up with this? Uh, they just pitched it by me. They're like, are you okay with this? This is what we decided. Like, this is the easiest thing ever. No problem. You should see his other bumper stickers. They're worse. Yeah, honk if you're horny. <laughs> I have a question. Okay. How do they make dairy products lactose-free? Because if you actually go on to... Starbucks's app mm -hmm. and you want to order a lactose free milk with your coffee it they don't call it milk they call right. it lactose free beverage oh so is milk a lie no they just put a filter on the udder they put like a filter on the cow's tate and then when they squeeze the milk out it catches the lactose parts tate is that a scientific term? Uh, yes, I believe so. I grew up on a farm, so. Sounds like it. <laughs> we if didn't it, have animals. It, <laughs> hey, weren't you on a grain farm? <laughs> anyway. I still spent a lot of time watching ranchers milk animals. You're that kind of my thing. You were the annoying king kid down the road that would stop by on your bicycle. Yeah. What are you guys Can doing? Can I watch? <laughs> Check out these hands. <laughs> Uh, anyway, no, that's a lie. I was just kidding. They don't put filters on the udders. So what is it? If uh, anyone knows the actual answer... You do know? Yeah. They just remove some of the problematic sugars that seem to be hard for people who are lactose intolerant how? to digest. How do they get rid of this? It's already a liquid. How do they get it out? Well, I'm sure they actually do have some kind of filtering process that they send it through, but it's probably not right on the udder. If anyone has an actual answer, that instead of is writing, an making actual things answer. up, you're making things up trying to sound smart. Mm-mm. Dairy free means there's not uh it's not a dairy product. There's no cows involved, but they try to mimic something that would taste like milk. So lactose free milk is not from a cow? Matt, lactose free milk is dairy free milk is not. To, to be perfectly honest, I don't care because you put anything in my body. I'm a machine. The Ryder and Lisa podcast. Brought to you by Yeg Property Pros. Powered by Real Broker. Get a realtor who knows. Call the pros. Play 107.